All right, welcome everyone. So recently I posted a video um, on Instagram and LinkedIn showing how I use uh, AI generated images um, and convert them to 3D models using um, depth map estimation using a tool called Zoe Depth. Or Zoe Depth. Uh, so here's a quick overview on the steps I take to uh, take this image uh, convert it, bring it into Blender, and then uh, convert the vertex colors to an actual texture uh, so this model can be used in other applications such as Gravity Sketch or Moto, Maya, uh, any other poly modeling software you want to use. So let's get started. So you can see here I've got a few images that were generated using Midjourney. You can use Stable Diffusion or just use any images you want, but I'm going to choose this one here. Uh, what I'm going to do is take that image and come over to, um, I'll leave this link in the description. Uh, it's a Hugging Faces space uh, for Zodepth. I'm going to grab this image and you want to make sure you have Image to 3D selected. And then we'll grab our image and just drag it into the box here and then hit submit and you'll see this only takes a couple seconds and it will start to generate um, this depth map first and then it'll spit out a 3d mesh which you can uh, rotate and preview in this window here this is looking pretty good um, so what i'm going to do is download this and i'll just call it uh, helmet and hit save so as you can see here, it uh, saved this GLB file uh, in the demo folder that I created. You can save it wherever you want, name it whatever you want. And I have a default to open with the um, Microsoft 3D Viewer. So this is just a good way to take a look at it and see what it looks like. You'll notice that the colors are um, a bit off. It's a lot brighter. The um, conversion process, uh, it must use a different gamma setting so everything will be a bit brighter but we can fix that later on uh, once we create the texture so that's that so now i know this uh, is a usable model and we'll jump into blender here all right now we'll just jump into blender here and delete the cube we'll do import and you want gltf 2.0 it's a glb or gltf file and then we will paste in that location and you'll see the file there just hit import that'll take about a second and once it comes in you'll see it's actually a just a shaded mesh um, that's because the mesh file itself has a or the geometry has an attribute tag or a color attribute that's the vertex coloring there um, so what you want to do is come up to the top right here if you're shading and just hit attribute and that will turn that on I also like to turn it to flat uh, just to get rid of any other shading that's in the scene. So as you can see, once you have the object in the scene, um, it doesn't quite fit the world space or anything. It's just a floating object in there. And you'll see that because the image was kind of extracted or extruded from a, a single viewpoint, um, you have some distortion to the model and some flat areas that aren't quite the shape that you want. And this is where the manual work um, starts to take over and I'll be doing that with the sculpting tool uh, but first I kind of try and align this model to the uh, to the space itself so I'll pick like the circular object here on the, on the side and make sure that that is um, set up uh, on a plane that I can I can start working from so I'll just start doing that right now it's pretty much just moving this around in the scene and then I'll I'll start sculpting it and manipulating it while I'm doing this I just kind of um, try and think about where the center line of the helmet might be and what what things might need to um, align to be symmetrical and I'll throw in a plane here uh, or a yeah, cube to kind of set that so while I'm manipulating it I'll see where that center line uh, lands. I also like to um, hit I'll select the object and, and edit it so this way I'll just get rid of the vertices in the background so you'll see they'll all be selected so I'll just come here and delete them I usually use the lasso tool but you can use whatever you want so once I have this plane in place um, this is where I start sculpting um, 
I'm not really going to be using any of the stuff over on this side, so this kind of just gives me a, a guess on where the, the center line of the helmet will be. So once you're, you have the object selected, you just hit Sculpt. And pretty much I just use the grab tool, make it kind of a bigger radius, and start manipulating. So I know from like this view, I think this, this stuff needs to be a lot rounder and pulled out. Um, so I'll start to just do that here. Uh, we do want to be conscious of where this center line might be. Um, this is where I, I kind of toggle the cube on and off and see where things want to be. But it's really just kind of getting rid of the any any distortion that might be in the helmet and kind of uh, you want to make it you know a nice form um, so you can start editing it in uh, other software. Good thing is having the texture on here um, allows you to um, you know use it to line up things and, and look at the the details of it while you're manipulating it here. Then once I get it where I want it um, I'll come back over to the edit mode and we will just do a, a box select around all the vertices on the other side of the symmetry line and I will delete them. Now that we've got all that deleted I come over and add a mirror modifier I'll come back to object mode uh, and this way we can see it actually uh, symmetrical so we'll come over to mirror and so once you turn that on you'll be able to see if your object is too wide or too narrow um, so what I'll do here is just kind of scale it out a little bit more um, and then this way you can start manipulating it a bit um, again with the other side there so we'll come back to sculpt mode you can see this is a bit pointy Actually, we'll turn on clipping. So as you can see, we do have a bit of a crease in the middle here. It's a bit pointy, um, but I think that's okay. I'm, I will likely be manipulating this a little bit more and creating my own topology so I can fix that sort of thing um, later on. Uh, I'm just noticing this line here is a little weird. So I think, you know, you could take this as far as you want, um, but for, for the needs that I, I need it for, um, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. The, this is a little weird, the shape of the, the, the top here, but again, I'm going to create my own topology uh, over the top of this. So this is really just a, a start on on how to start manipulating this, this type of geometry um, and, and create it so it suits your needs. Okay, so for this part, I'm going to show you how to uh, fix the color of the uh, image here. As I talked about before, the gamma. Um, seems to be a lot brighter on this uh, vertex color um, versus the actual rendered image. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you how to UV map this and bake the vertex coloring to an actual uh, image texture. This way you can then export the model uh, to any other software um, that might not support vertex coloring. Um, it would also allow us to decimate the model down. This way you don't have to export this extremely dense uh, mesh file into other software. Um, so let's start by uh, coming over here to our uh, scene render settings. You're going to want to make sure you're on cycles, um, CPU device, and then you'll come down to bake. And under the bake options, I'm going to change this to diffuse. It, I don't know what it comes default, but I keep it on diffuse. Uh, above surface is fine. And then I'm going to uncheck um, direct and indirect if it's selected. Um, these are the contributions to um, how it will be rendered. All we want to do is bake the color. We don't want any lights from the scene to um, uh, affect the coloring of, of the final texture also change the margin of um, the pixels this will have to do with the bounds of the UV it should only be one big island but if it breaks up into uh, multiple that will be the the distance between the islands um, so that's the first setting there the next thing we'll do is come over to shading and we will hit shift a search and we'll find an image texture we want to create this image texture so when it does bake it puts it into this here. So we'll do new, we'll call it uh, helmet bake, name it whatever you want. And I'll just do a 2K texture. Um, I don't know how big you can actually bake from vertex coloring, but the 2K texture seems to be fine. And then we'll hit okay. 
we'll make sure that's here. Eventually we're going to replace this color attribute um, with this texture. Uh, sometimes I do notice that some of these settings do affect the actual bake. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this principled BSDF. We'll do a diffuse BSDF. Um, so eventually we will uh, plug this into it, but I think for now we'll just leave this the way it is or with this diffuse here. Um, and then now we will select the object and come over to UV and we'll be in edit mode and I will come to the side view. Um, you, this is a point where I probably should have done this earlier because of the way the um, original model was mapped. It would be good to just project it from a single front facing view, but since I've sculpted it, um, it's hard to do it from a perspective, but I think I can get away with just a side view on this one. I don't think there's any geometry that might be tucked behind the model along the uh, symmetry plane. Um, so we'll, we'll just do it from our X view. Then I'll hit, uh, in edit mode, hit A, and then that will select all the faces, and then I'll come up to UV, and I'll just do project from view and bounds, and that will fill uh, this UV space, and it should apply this helmet bake texture if it doesn't. Just hit the drop down and um, hit that. Now it will be all black because there's nothing baked yet. And we'll just come back to our modeling view. Um, and that should be everything. We should, once that's selected, we just hit bake. So depending on um, the hardware your computer has, this might take a few minutes. So I'll just time lapse this section uh, and we'll see the final image once it's done. Oh, there we go so it's done and you can see it baked it into this uv space here um, and now what we'll, we'll do is just save this image so i'll just do image and save and i've already saved it once so I'll just testing so i'll just overwrite that one save image as and that should do it so now what i'm going to do is just use photoshop to fix the gamma as you can see with the original image it's a lot more saturated a lot more contrast um, so that's what we'll do uh, in a second here so you can see here I've just opened the uh, baked file in Photoshop and I'm just going to do an image adjustment and exposure and we'll just knock this to like 0.5. I think that I found that that works pretty well. Uh, so you can see once you have the two next to each other that the saturation and the, the contrast is about the same. So that should do it. And then we'll just hit save. So once that's saved, I can come back here in our shading. Okay, so what I'm going to do is now come down to our mesh and delete the color attribute there. So you'll have your model turn white. And then once we delete this, we can bring our image, plug it in there. And then we'll just have to make sure we turn on texture. And there you go. Now you can see you have a nice uh, higher contrast and uh, more saturated image. And that should do it for that. We'll just come back to modeling window and do that same thing because I forgot it. that window does that. Okay, so once we have that, we can turn back on our, our mirror modifier and that's that. Um, the other reason to do this is to, like I was talking about, decimate the model down um, because it is so dense uh, that might not be usable for some people. So what I'm gonna do is add a decimation modifier right here, decimate, and I'll knock that down to like um, 0 0.01, something like that, hit enter. This might take a second to do, um, but once it does it, I'll show you the wireframe and that should do it. So now you see we have a, a much dent, uh, a lighter mesh file. So when you export this, um, you'll just apply the modifiers. So you have a nice usable UV mapped mesh, um, textured mesh, so you can use it in any other software. <clears throat> Okay, so for this part, I'll just show you how to bring the exported FBX file into Gravity Sketch. You can realistically bring that file into any software. I just prefer bringing it into Gravity Sketch so I can um, look around it and kind of design uh, new elements and, and check out the proportions and volumes uh, at scale in VR. So what I'm going to do is come to my import directory or my prefab library, and I'll just find the folder that I saved it to, Helmet Demo. Now this FBX file, usually it should come in textured. Um, for some reason, the latest files I've been exporting from Blender aren't. 
Um, so I'll show you a little workaround for that. If when you grab your object and put it here, it's just uh, coming in as a as a, a white gray mesh. Um, so what I'm going to do is just rotate it so it's vertical, and I can see my symmetry plane this way. Um, 135 millimeters seems small. Uh, that seems big. So I didn't actually scale this in Blender, so I don't know what size it is, but we'll leave it at 152 um, and hit OK. So since it came in without the texture, um, what I have done is put the actual texture in my image reference folder. So we can just drag that into the scene and use it to paint the model, and it should respect the UV layout. So I'll just grab the image here. And then when I grab the object and hit the color picker, I could just pick the cube um, because the image is in the scene as a texture, and then I can just delete that. And that's kind of a workaround if your file isn't uh, coming in pre-textured, you can just do that. Uh, so let's make another folder. I'm going to just import uh, another file here. Um, so we'll call this, that's there. So what I'm going to do now is actually import um, another file that I know is the correct scale. It's a scan of my head. Let's see where did I save that helmet. So helmet one to our head one to one. I'll put that in the scene. Let's see what direction is this. I'm just gonna rotate it. Oops. That way. Is that 230 tall? Yeah, that looks about right. So we'll just stick that on this layer, and I'm going to lock it. We'll turn down the transparency a little bit. This way I can. Um, grab this model and just scale it up to kind of roughly fit this. So I'll swipe to the left there and grab my um, manipulator here. I'm going to grab scale, click the object, and then hold snap and drag that to zero. And then I can grab this handle here and, and scale it up. So I think something like that will work. And then I'm just going to move it around in space. Um, to where I think it fits the head. That looks pretty good. I'll do this once again and just rotate um, this object. So we'll click, hold snap, drag it to zero, and it should snap to the origin. And then I will just rotate it a bit and then move this into place. And I think that should be pretty good. Might be a little off, but we're just eyeballing it. And this is really just to get a good look at it um, and spin it around in comparison to an actual known object size. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, so from here, you can start building geometry, sketching over it, you know, maybe filling in um, the rear here with, with information. So you can kind of design the back of the helmet here if you want to fi uh, finalize it. So overall, this is a, a, a proof of concept process. Um, this is just something I found that could be useful for me. You know, whether or not you find it useful is, is up to you, but I think it's a, a good starting point for um, using all these new tools like AI and VR together, you know, and, and trying to come up with new ways to um, better your, your uh, 3D or your design process. So I hope you enjoyed, and we'll uh, catch you next time.